Okay, so today we are going to talk about the hypothalamus. Uh, it's one of the important structures in our brain which uh, gives a house for the various important uh, regulatory uh, vital centers which regulates the uh, functions of the heart or respiratory centers like a reg um, a regulation of the os osmosis or temperature regulation. All those things occur in the hypothalamus and it is one of the important structure for maintaining of homeostasis. And that's why we are going to study today about the hypothalamus. Uh, hypothalamus is a subcortical nucleus and it is a group of the nucleus uh, together which uh, present just below the thalamus. That's why name is given hypothalamus. Hypo means below. So that's why name is given hypothalamus and it contains various different part of the group of the nucleus and and this nuclear uh, these are like we can call it subcortical nucleus and these are nucleus uh, which communicate with the different part of the brains and depend upon getting information they will respond it by making some changes in the autonomic functions so it is like one of the important functions which modifies the both sympathetic and parasympathetic activity that's why it is also called as the head ganglion of the autonomic uh, nervous system so these uh, nuclear masses are present bilaterally uh, on both sides of the brain and, and they um, compactly packed uh, together and and just to understand the functioning of the uh, Papa, one minute So to understand the function of the hypothalamus, first we need uh, to understand the anatomy. Here I will not go and describe detail of the anatomy, just uh, useful anatomy which uh, make you understand the various functioning of the hypothalamus. So first we see the boundaries of the hypothalamus. Superiorly, hypothalamus such as it is just below the thalamus. So it's separate, uh, superiorly thalamus will be there and separate thalamus uh, from the hypothalamus circle by the uh, hypothalamus, uh, hypothalamus through the hypothalamic sulcus. Uh, inferiorly, it uh, just uh, present on the roof of the third ventricle. So inferiorly, there is a third ventricle floor of the third ventricle uh, will lies, and uh, it uh, separates in different uh, structure which lies in the uh, third ventricle, like tuberous cerebrum, infundibulum, and also mammalian bodies. Uh, then uh, medially, uh, it is uh, separated uh, uh, from the part of the third ventricle wall of the third ventricle. Laterally also it is in close contact with the internal capsule which carries the various uh, five uh, uh, tracts, ascending descending tracts in uh, that. Uh, that structure will be very close to the hypothalamus. Anteriorly there is anterior commissure and lamina uh, terminally. So posteriorly it uh, merges with the ventral thalamus and also forms the part of the mammillary bodies. Uh, then, uh, this, uh, as I said, it's a group of the nucleus and this nucleus can be divided into different parts for the ease of understanding. And so from medial to lateral, it's divided into two zones, medial zones and lateral zones. Well, anterior to posterior is divided into uh, four zones, preoptic zone, supraoptic zone, tubular zone and mammary zone or preoptic region, uh, supraoptic region, tubular region or mammary region. Now, this uh, preoptic region is lies between the Medial laminalis till uh, the preoptic nucleus. While supraoptic region is lies just above the supra, uh, uh, just above the optic chiasma. And it contains uh, suprachiasmatic nucleus, supraoptic anterior nucleus, and paraventricular nucleus. While tubular region is one of the biggest region in the hypothalamus, and it contains uh, middle nuclear groups and also includes dorsal medial lateral and tubular and ventral medial and arcuate. A nucleus. Well, mammary region is the posterior part of the um, hypothalamus. It contains posterior nuclear groups and uh, mammary nucleus. Then connection. Connection is a more important structure, uh, uh, part for to understand the physiology. So, how vastly it's connected and which which part of the brain is get connected, and from there it get information. So, first, after uh, connections that connections, which comes to the Mm, hypothalamus so it get a, 
various fibers from the limbic system and it is uh, medial forebit four mandel which consists ascending and descending fibers uh, and also uh, it get a fibers from the anterior olfactory area so smell sensations ka bhi information aapko dilas rahe hote then it also runs through the lateral zone of the hypothalamus and reach to the treatment of the midbrain and also end with the hypothalamic nucleus and uh, raphe nucleus and then it goes to the reticular uh, formation and these are usually related with the uh, middle bay for but it is more related with the emotions and um, olfactory sense and that's why olfactory or smell sensation are also very close related with the emotions then fornix is a uh, it all uh, from the fornix it get a main position from hippocampal formation and uh, goes to the mammillary uh, body then from stier terminalis also the fibers goes and it goes to the amygdala uh, amygdala body and it so, and then it go from there it reaches to the thalamus and then it terminate into preoptic and anterior nucleus of the uh, thalamus then middle hypothalamic tract will come which uh, Uh, connect to the hippocampus uh, to the arteriot nucleus and also uh, also forms a pathway with between the stier terminalis and other major pathways from the medial hypothalamus then come to the um, brain stems from brain stems it uh, comes to mammillary peduncles this bundle fibers comes and connect the attachment of the midbrain to the mammillary body and also fibers uh, carries the uh, taste sensations and general sensations from uh, from the spinal cord and brain stem centers to the nucleus tractus solitorius and also dorsal nucleus of uh, vagus then dorsal longitudinal fasciculus of scurs sc uh, will come and the fibers arise from the preaqueductal gray matter and it spread to the dorsal and caudal region of the hypothalamus this fibers carries visceral impulses uh, to the hypothalamus then middle uh, middle forebrain uh, bundle uh, these are the fibers which ascends from the midbrain and project to the lateral hypothalamic and preoptic nuclei and this fiber carry also carries uh, visceral uh, uh, impulses from uh, to the hypothalamus then catecholaminergic pathways uh, these are the pathways which uh, release the uh, ad adrenaline and noradrenaline and this come from the locus cerulus uh, and then uh, So, synapses with the cerebrum and uh, cerebellum then uh, from cerebellum this fiber project to the thalamic nucleus and then uh, goes to the hypothalamus and septal layer and amygdaloid body and hippocampus uh, these are fibers are more related to the um, alertness or sleep wakefulness of the uh, brain then there is a catecholaminergic fibers also comes from the sup supraoptic and paraventricular nucleus and then it is uh, usually regulate the uh, uh, hypothalamus hormones of the hypothalamus then there is a serotonin pathway is also there which comes from the raphe nucleus of the pons and then it goes to, uh, to the hypothalamus septal nucleus and amygdaloid body and also goes to the neocortex and this also participate in the sleep wake uh, cycle then uh, it also receives the fiber from the neocortex that is called uh, cortico hypothalamic fibers and it comes from the different areas of the cortex more specifically from prefrontal area orbital frontal regions uh, and then it goes to the preoptic and paraventricular and ventral medial nucleus of the hypothalamus then it will also get a fibers from the basal ganglia from global pallidus and pallidus hypothalamic fiber forms and goes comes from the globus pallidus and it diffuse into the different areas of the hypothalamus then it also gets from the thalam uh, thalamus the thalamus hypothalamic fibers uh, uh, from dorsal middle um, uh, nucleus and midline nucleus of the hypothalamus so it goes to the different areas of the hypothalamus then it also gets fibers from the retina like the called retina hypothalamic fibers and it is pro pro uh, projected into uh, uh, from the ganglionic cells of the retina to the suprachiasmatic nucleus of the hypothalamus through the optic nerve then fibers going output uh, uh, uh different fibers which uh, output coming from the hypothalamus so there is autonomic centers present in the body so uh, hypothalamus sends fibers to the different autonomic autonomic centers present in the body like uh, from the brain stem and the spinal cord and modifies the sympathetic and parasympathetic action 
these fibers which are coming from the body include the uh, these centers include nucleus structure solid areas dorsomedial nucleus of the vagus nucleus ambiguous and parabrachial nucleus and the, uh, from there the fiber again descend to the spinal cord and land them into intermediolateral gray matter of the spinal cord and from there it also modifies the sympathetic and parasympathetic activity then also fibers goes to the limbic systems and it uh, from the hypothalamus it goes to the various part of the limbic system through like stera terminalis uh, which has a connection with the ventromedial nucleus and amygdala nucleus then for med uh, med medial uh, forebrain bundle which connect the lateral hypothalamus to the septal nucleus and, uh, and then from there it relates to the hippocampus and then through the ventral path which connect to the lateral hypothalamus with the amygdaloid uh, nucleus and these are more related to the memory and uh, emotions then thalamus uh, the mammalothalamic uh, tract will be there where the mammary body connect with the anterior nucleus of the thalamus and which uh, then connect to the cingulate gyrus and thus forming the component of papes uh, circuit this fiber is also re uh, re uh, responsible for the various emotions and behavioral aspects uh, of the in uh, individual then uh, tegmentum of the midbrain also connected to the mammalotegmental uh, tracts and the mammalian body uh, and it turned into ventral and dorsal tegmental nuclei of the midbrain then it also connected to neocortex so just neocortex fibers are it also gives feedback to the neocortex and it's almost different areas of the neocortex will be uh, connected with the hypothalamus widely and uh, its main role is to, uh, about the arousal then uh, there is a direct connection with the pituitary gland so there is two way of the connection one th uh, is through the uh, hypothalamus hypopacial uh, tract where the uh, large axon uh, neurosecretory axons will be there of the supraoptic nucleus and paraventricular nucleus and these uh, fibers directly goes to the posterior pituitary gland and the hormones will be stored in posterior pituitary gland then there is a tubero infundibular uh, tract where fibers coming from the arsen nucleus extend into median eminence and infundibular stem of the uh, pituitary gland and where they release uh, the uh, neurosecretory or neurohormones into the hypopoiseal portal system and where this blood come, uh, take from the infundibular stem and it goes towards the anterior pituitary and modifies the functions of anterior pituitary gland so from this chart you can understand uh, different connections like uh, this hypothalamus and these connections coming from the neocortex and again it goes back the neocortex so these vast uh, connections then uh, limbic system also has a different areas of the brain and then again it goes back to the uh, uh, limbic system then uh, brain stem the autonomic system so there are different vast connections you can go through it in detail and you can take a picture of this also and you can read it then most important part of the uh, this chapter is the functions of hypothalamus uh, hypothalamus has a various functions uh, in the body and uh, can divide it into different like autonomic functions endocrine functions then uh, uh, maintenance of the sleep wake cycle or maintenance of the circadian rhythm, the regulation of the food intake, then uh, effect on sexual behavior and reproduction, then emotional and intellectual behavior, then regulation of the body temperature and regulation of water uh, balance. First, we we'll see, uh, see the autonomic function. As I in uh, start of the class already told, how the hypothalamus is considered as a head ganglion of the autonomic nervous system. In this anterior part of the hypothalamus is more of the considered a parasympathetic area. So stimulation of the anterior part of the hypothalamus will increase parasympathetic activity. While posterior hypothalamus is more related to the cardiovascular, uh, sorry, more related to the sympathetic uh, functions. Uh, so whenever we stimulate, it will increase the sympathetic activity. So we'll see the how the autonomic nervous system are perfect, the different part of the body. So first is the cardiovascular uh, functions. So when we stimulate the posterior or lateral nucleus of the hypothalamus, it will um, increase the sympathetic activity that will increase heart rate, vasoconstriction and also 
ultimately it will increase blood pressure. Similarly, when we stimulate the preoptic area, that will increase parasympathetic activity and that will decrease heart rate and also it will cause vasodilatation and it will lead to decrease in blood pressure. Then you see the pupillary size, it is a, a pupil which is present in the eyes. So stimulation of the posterior or lateral hypothalamus will cause dilatation of the pupil that is called medriasis while stimulation of the anterior or middle part of the uh, preoptic area or supraoptic will cause constriction of the pupil that is called meiosis. The regulation of the peristaltic activity and secretomotor function of the alimentary tract. So on stimulation of the posterior and lateral hypothalamus will decrease in the secretion and motility of the gastrointestinal tract that is called ergotrophic function. So it will give uh, enough time to, of the food to stay in the alimentary tract so that a more absorption can occur. While stimulation of the anterior middle part will increase the parasympathetic activity and that will increase peristalsis and secretive function of the alimentary tract and that is called topotropic function. It is like a, it helps to uh, empty the bowels <coughs> from the body. And then come to the endocrine functions. Uh, as we usually consider the anterior, uh, we consider pituitary gland as a, sorry. <coughs> as we consider the pituitary gland as a grandmaster of the endocrine orchestra, but the pituitary gland is also under the control of the hypothalamus. And hypothalamus control, control both anterior pituitary and posterior pituitary. Anterior pituitary, it will control by releasing the uh, trophic hormones or inhibiting hormones uh, which directly reach to the antipatry through the uh, hypophysal portal uh, system. So, uh, hypothalamus secretes uh, the hormones into the uh, tuberous infundibular tract and from there it goes to the blood and through hypothalamus uh, portal system that hormone will reach in very high concentration into the anterior pituitary area and this hormone will control the various functions. So, the hypothalamus release the various releasing hormone. So, hypothalamus release the thyrotropic uh, releasing hormone. That thyrotropic releasing hormone will act on anterior pituitary and that will increase release of thyrotropic hormone also called as thyroid stimulating hormone. And that thyroid stimulating hormone will act on thyroid gland and increase thyroid, thyroid stimulation or thyroxin uh, release of by the gland. And this is how it will influence the function of the thyroid gland. Then um, it also releases the hormone which can act on the adrenal cortex directly, uh, not directly through the pituitary. So it will release a corticotropic releasing hormone, CRH. The corticotropic release hormone will act on uh, anterior and that anterior will release ACTH, adrenal corticotropic hormone. And that ACTH will act on adrenal cortex and increase uh, releasing of the steroid hormones uh, like mineral corticoids, glucocorticoids and that will affect the metabolism of the lipid, uh, affect the metabolism of carbohydrate, affect the metabolism of the minerals and ultimately it uh, participates in the regulation of the glucose regulation, fat regulation and also electrolytes uh, regulation in the uh, body. Then uh, this uh, hypothalamus also releases the hormone that is called gonadotropic releasing hormone and that hormone act on anterior pituitary and that will causes the releasing of the FSH and LH and that will perform various uh, sexual function like uh, maturation of the gonad, maturation of the uh, genitals and also uh, uh, formation of the sperm, release of the sex, uh, uh, sex hormones and uh, uh, release of the worm and uh, activation of the sperms, all those functions will be performed by these uh, FSH and LHS. Ap apart from this, hypothalamus also important for the initiation of the puberty. So, hypothalamus involved in initiation of the puberty uh, also. So, this, uh, these are the various functions. Then, uh, hypothalamus also release the hormone, like prolactin releasing hormone and prolactin inhibiting hormone also. The prolactin releasing hormone will increase the release uh, uh, release of the prolactin hormone, and that can uh, act on the breast tissue and uh, stimulate the formation of uh, milk. 
while uh, prolactin inhibit will inhibit the prolactin secretion. Then uh, uh, hypothalamus also has a direct function on the growth hormone. So hypothalamus releases growth hormone releasing hormone and also growth hormone inhibiting hormone. That both will uh, release simultaneously that can increase and decrease the growth hormone uh, release. Then it also regulates the posterior pituitary functions. Hypothalamus uh, forms the hypothalamus hypophysal tract and they release uh, directly at uh, ADH hormone by supraoptic nucleus and also part of the paraventricular nucleus and which is involved in uh, release of uh, regulation of the water and electrolytes in the body. Well, it also releases the another hormone posterior that is oxytocin. And that oxytocin will act directly on the uterine muscle causes stimulation of the contraction of uterine smooth muscles and that can help in delivery of the baby or parturition. And it also acts on a myoepithelial cell which present uh, uh, surrounding the alveoli of the breast and when they contract it causes a milk ejection. Then hypothalamus plays very important role in a sleep-wake uh, cycle. And this hypothalamus uh, uh, has a directly connection with the it get input from the uh, retina. It get input from the different part of the body and uh, stimulations like uh, auditory stimulation, visual stimulation, and that regulate the sleep and wake cycle, depend upon the. Uh, timing of the area like we adjust also when we come from the one country to other country and our sleep cycle will get adjustment so there are different uh, areas it is a wakefulness is like an inhibition of the sleeping cycle and this is how it will cause the sleepness and or um, inhibition so it's always we need to stimulate to keep our, ourselves awake so when a stimulation of the wake center is lost will immediately will fall into uh, sleep. So there are many times we cause lesions to hypothalamus, it can cause severe coma. Then hypothalamus also plays a important role in circadian rhythm. Uh, sleep wake cycle is also one of the part of the circadian rhythm. And there is like a uh, various body functions are depend upon the timing of the day. So there is a biological clock present in our uh, brain and depend upon the, the timing of the day different uh, functions will be uh, performed like uh, moment you get in the early in the morning even if you had a late night food also then also you feel like a, if you are regularly having breakfast at 7 o'clock morning then you start feeling hunger then uh, what is your routine is really almost fixed so that is how your circadian rhythm will, has been uh, develop and that circadian rhythm is this this uh, decided or uh, maintained by the hypothalamus. Hypothalamus get inputs from the uh, various uh, part of the body like retina, the pineal gland, and all those things, and they will secrete uh, the hormones and that hormone is responsible for the maintenance of circadian rhythm. So pineal gland is one of the important hormone that melatonin is secreted and that is responsible for the uh, circadian rhythm. Now what is a circadian rhythm is there so it is like a, if you see the ACTH hormone so there is a cause a high secretion of the ACTH will be in the early in the morning so four o'clock or six o'clock there will be a high concentration of the ACTH secretion so and it is low when you are in the late afternoon or in the evening so there is like daily variation you can see in individual similarly growth hormone it is a very high secretion of the growth hormone when you are in a very deep sleep stage 4 while well, there is fluctuating secretion will occur throughout the day the melatonin also as a there is a different uh, type of the uh, hormone secretion and depend on that the circadian like body temperature also if you see your body temperature is little bit low in early in the morning and it is very high in the late evening similarly gonadotropin hormone secretion also has a rhythmic pattern of the secretion and it not only in the Rhythmic pattern daily pattern it also follows the monthly pattern also that is called menstrual cycle. So this uh, when daily is there, there is circadian rhythm. It's, circadian means uh, per day or circular day. 
So similarly, we had a monthly rhythm also and the developmental rhythm also. How the circuit rhythm uh, develops? It is always an internal function and uh, there is a biological clock is decided by the hypothalamus depend upon our uh, exposure to the light at dark phases. So when you are in a light phase, then it the uh, um, hypothalamus consider it is like a daytime, and when there is a night, uh, you are in dark phase, then it consider it as a, like it is a night is going on. Accordingly, the hypothalamus adjusts the biological uh, clock, and the major function of this biological clock is maintained by the suprachiasmatic uh, nucleus. The suprachiasmatic nucleus get uh, inputs from the different areas, like it get input from the eyes to retina hypothalamic fibers. It also get uh, input from the lateral genital body, which also get input from the uh, retina. Apart from this, it also gets input from the different areas of the neocortex where activity is going on, all those things. Then uh, other environmental factors will also affect on uh, this your circadian rhythm, like uh, your temperature. रात को थोड़ा कम टेम्परेचर होता है दिन में ज़्यादा टेम्परेचर होता है इफ़ यू आर हैविंग टू हाई टर इन नाइट टाइम देन इट माइट अफेक्ट योर स्लीप साइकल देन मील टाइमिंग हाउ और फ्रीक्वेंटली यू आर हैविंग मील दैट विल गिव्स लिटिल बिट हिंट टू द सुपर चार्जमेंटिक न्यूक्लियस वेदर इट इज डे टाइम और नाइट टाइम इफ दिस एविडेंस इज हैज बीन रिमूव uh, suppose uh, we are not like a normally we Indians have a breakfast. So we had a snacks like a idli or dosa or something. Then in the afternoon we had a full meal. Then in dinner we had some salad or a, a very light meal. So that is how it we get hint also. So there was a experiment has been done. And they were uh, see normally what happened rat rats are very active in night phase and they are very inactive in daytime. So what they did, they put the rat in a completely dark uh, laboratory and they never exposed him to the light. Still he could able to maintain his circadian uh, rhythm. The activity and inactivity is almost uh, will be there. But once we can destroy the suprachiasmatic nucleus, then that circadian rhythm will has been completely uh, disturbed. Now, uh, similar ex uh, experiment we can do on human being also we can keep him in the dark room or uh, we can keep him on a light room or allow him to uh, switch on switch off the light on his own but uh, will not expose him to the daytime or there will be no clock or nothing uh, will be older so there will be no hint of the timing for him and we'll also give him meal on a regular interval every four four hours same meal so that meal will also will not give him any hint and then slowly, slowly, his circadian rhythm will start disturbing. Now, it is not like only light or dark phase will affect, but environmental factors are also important to decide or to give the uh, hint to the individual. Then, how the circadian rhythm? Uh, sorry. Then, what is the uh, significance of this circadian rhythm? Uh, it is very important to maintain the homeostasis. Just where I will give an example, like ADH hormone. Uh, there is a secretion of the ADH hormone is high when you are in a uh, night time. So what will happen there if you are sleeping uh, at that time and the high ADH secretion will be there. It will cause very less urine formation that will not disturb your sleep. That's why you will get a very concentrated urine in the early morning. So the, all these has been adjusted so that our life will be more comfortable and homeostasis will be uh, maintained properly. Now, in night uh, we had a meal and then uh, whole night we'll uh, sleep. So, there's a quite fasting of 8 to tw uh, 12 hours. Uh, for that, our body will keep on adjusting, having different hormones and all those things so that we will not feel hunger and also there is no hypoglycemia in our body. So, as like according to that, it will uh, start affecting. Similarly, circadian rhythm can um, show the resistance to the various drug of particular timing. And so, accordingly, you should uh, adjust uh, your uh, medicines. Then, uh, um, the circadian rhythm disturb when you travel from the one area of the uh, country or uh, world to the other area. 
with a very high speed. It, uh, it will get adjusted if you are uh, traveling through the cruise or something. So slowly, slowly you move, your body will get adjusted with the uh, that circadian rhythm. But if it, we, we go with a flight and at high speed, we will move from one place to other place. Then this suddenly uh, biological clock change. External clock will be different and internal clock will be different. That condition is called jet lag. And that will, you will experience that jet lag for 7 to 15 days. <coughs> then come to the regulation of the food intake. Okay, before we will start, for, go for the regulation of the food intake. Uh, we will take a small break. So now come to the regulation of food intake. Um, food intake is a very important function of our body and it is uh, important for our survival. And it regulated uh, uh, by hypothalamus and if it is properly regulated, it can also regulate our body weight. So food intake, regulation of food intake is also related to the regulation of our uh, body weight when we are uh, seeing it for the long period. So there are two centers present in our uh, hypothalamus. There is one is a feeding center, another is called satiety center. Feeding center is uh, also called as hunger center, and is present in lateral hypothalamic uh, nucleus. And when we stimulate, it creates uh, carving for the food or desire for the uh, food and severe hunger sensations. And if we continue stimulation, it can cause this, if uh, animal can increase um, for. Increase. And this is uh, called hyperphagia. That phase of, uh, of the eating is called hyperphagia. And if it is uh, continuously stimulated, it can also cause uh, obesity. If we destroy this uh, center, it will cause complete loss of appetite. So you will not be able to like to eat any food. And that, that uh, phase of life is called anorexia. So, but normally feeding center is always active. And it has to be inhibited by the another center that is called satiety center. So, so uh, feeding uh, you will always in a phase of hunger state. But it is always keep uh, uh, checked by the another center that is satiety center. Satiety is literally naming is a like a satisfaction. So, it is a full feeling of giving fulfillment of the uh, your stomach or uh, I'm happy with whatever I had food that is called a satiety. So it is usually present in the intermedial nucleus of the hypothalamus and when you stimulate it, it inhibit the uh, 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 feeding center and will causes stoppage of the food. So when you eat a food, man, suppose uh, what are the various uh, factors? Okay. So there are various uh, factors which uh, stimulate the feeding center that will make you more and more hunger and when you eat it is not like that those factors has been removed from the body like suppose hypoglycemia stimulate your uh, feeding center and you start feeling hungry so it is not like you start eating food and immediately your glucose level start rising so you will stop eating even if your glucose level is not raised because of uh, stimulation of surgery center surgery center get a uh, input from the various part like a Sensation present in the oral cavity, pharyngeal cavity, and also uh, smooth muscles of the stomach and the overstretching of the stomach and all those things will stimulate the satiety center and stop the feeding. So this is how it uh, work uh, both in coordination and try to regulate the food intake. Now there are various theories has been uh, postulated. Uh, regarding these uh, uh, food intake regulation so one is a glucostatic theory it is like a certain center act as a uh, glucose receptors and when our uh, and utilizes the glucose by the this cell and when there is a decrease in the glucose supply to the certain center it will cause a decrease activation of the uh, certain center and that will cause no stimulation of the certain center and that will uh, remove the inhibition from the feeding center and a person will start feeling hungry and now once we had a uh, uh, in, had a food and there is increase in glucose level 
that will increase activity in the circulatory center and that will inhibit the uh, feeding center and may get a feeling of fulfillment. But the problem is that it will take much more time to increase your glucose concentration in the food before we will get a fulfillment center. So that center uh, stimulation of uh, hunger can be explained but uh, fulfillment is cannot be explained by uh, this theory. The another theory is a uh, lipostatic theory where the hormone is secreted by the adipose tissue and that is called lepti or also this feeding center is respond to the level of uh, fatty acids and amino acids. So when there is decreased concentration of fatty acid and amino acid, it will cause overstimulation of the feeding center and, and that will be uh, 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 in, increased desire for the food. The another as well, adipose tissue cells secretes one hormone called leptin. This leptin act on a hypothalamus and it will decrease the release, uh, release of the another hormone or we can call also call as a neurohormone that is neuropeptide Y. And this neuropeptide Y will directly act on a feeding center and decrease food intake. So this is how when more adipose tissue will be there in the body, there will be more uh, leptin will be there and there will be more inhibition of the food intake and it will try to regulate the body weight. When there is less adipose tissue, will less leptin and it will stimulate the more food intake. This is how it will try to maintain your body weight on long term basis. The problem with the leptin is that leptin has a first order kinetics when it moves through the blood brain barrier. So after particular concentration, leptin cannot increase the concentration inside the brain. And because of that, uh, when you become obese, even if you have high leptin concentration in the blood, but if the concentration in the brain will be very low and that will not be enough to stimulate your feeding center. Then there is a gut peptide theory. So whenever you has a food into the stomach, it will release the various polypeptides and also called as JI hormones like a glucagon, cholecystokinin, GRP, peptide Y, somatostatin and they act directly on the hypothalamus and inhibit the food. This is quite a fast response as compared to glucostatic or lipostatic uh, theory. So moment you add a food, all these hormones are released immediately that can act on a uh, hypothalamus. Hypothalamus also has a receptors for both cholecystokinin uh, A receptor, cholecystokinin B receptor already present in hypothalamus and they play in the role of uh, maintaining the um, both uh, feeding center and uh, surgery center activity. Then there is a thermostatic theory where the body temperature regulates the food intake. Like uh, the fall in the body temperature will increase food, uh, uh, food intake while rise in the body temperature will decrease in the food intake and that is how we try to maintain the balance between the food intake. Then there is a role of the neurotransmitters like food intake increase when we are stimulating the alpha 2 receptors in the medial hypothalamus and also through the opioids so that's why many times when you had a uh, opioids it will increase your uh, hunger. Then uh, I will not mention the name of those opioids like about one of the drugs which is morphine that morphine increase your uh, hunger. Then food intake is decreased by stimulating the beta stimulator and also through the dopaminergic stimulator and that can um, uh, act on lateral hypothalamus and also through the serotonergic pathway and in de decrease the food intake. Then there are various uh, polypeptides which present in the hypothalamus and they directly increase the or decrease the food intake. Like neuropeptide by orexin A, orexin B, uh, MCH and garlic, they release into the hypothalamus and directly increase or stimulate the food intake. While there are other hormones like MSH or CART or CRH that will decrease the food intake. Then come to the regulation of the sexual behavior or reproduction. Uh, and mainly at the status terminal as a preoptic and tubular regions are considered to be pathway for the sex regulation. Like how frequently you like to have sex and uh, uh, desire of the sex and all those things can be uh, occur through this uh, tract. The tubular region of the hypothalamus maintain the uh, secretion of the gonadotropic releasing hormone in GnRH. 
and it has a directly connection with the preoptic area and it causes a cyclical release of the corneal drop in into the body and that uh, is also uh, responsible for the uh, ovulation then uh, when you stimulate the preoptic area directly it can produce ovulation in the experimental animal and if there is a destruction occur to the preoptic and tubular region it can prevent the permanent uh, ovulation uh, then it comes the role of the uh, hypothalamus in the emotional and instinctual uh, behavior uh, it is more closely related to the limbic system where hypothalamus has a direct connection with the limbic structures and uh, there is through the various sensory inputs that goes and can gives you feeling of pleasant or unpleasantness and because of that uh, it will create a various uh, feeling in your uh, brain and this is how you will make, uh, develop a behavior in your brain like uh, the two uh, activities occurring in the uh, limbic system one is a reward mechanism and another is a punishment mechanism so anything uh, you do and you like it it is like a reward uh, mechanism and you li uh, l uh, like to do that thing regular basis so this is how you learn to do something good for yourself anything uh, you do which you don't like that will makes you uh, stimulate the punishment mechanism like you uh, feeling of pain or something which you don't like unpleasant feeling and that act you will not uh, love to do and so you will restrain yourself from doing that particular act and this is how you will learn the various things in our life and, and this uh, both are present in the hypothalamus and they are very much involved in a learning mechanism is also and also your behavior now suppose you dress well properly and you go out then uh, people will praise you or will say you are looking nice and all those things that will stimulate your reward phenomenon and this is how you will start uh, doing that thing similarly if you are uh, doing something which is not uh, normal for the society Then they will give strange look that uh, stimulate your punishment mechanism, and you will stop yourself from doing a particular thing. So it depend upon your uh, how your brain respond to what uh, type of the behavior, and depend upon that you will decide your uh, thing. Like a reward center, which is usually located in the medial forward bundle and uh, lateral and medial nucleus of the hypothalamus, and when you stimulate electrically, the animal will want to. do that uh, get the stimulus again and again so there was experiment has been uh, given and where uh, uh, if he will press that red button it will stimulate this uh, lateral or middle lateral nucleus of hypothalamus and once uh, accidentally there are many buttons it's not like one button will be there and once accidentally that uh, rat press that button and he'll get that feeling and if you see after few hours you will keep on pressing that button because of getting that reward phenomenon similarly there is a punishment center present in the hypothalamus that is usually in medial hypothalamus or periventricular zone and electrical stimulation of this uh, center will give you feeling of fear pain escape uh, it is uncomfortable in that situation and uh, in same animal if you uh, do this and there is another uh, switch which is to keep on stimulating the punishment area even if you put a food or anything on that part that animal will restrain themselves from the stimulating to that uh, or pressing to that uh, switch and because he is getting a punishment phenomenon so this is how it will train you to do particular uh, act this is how rewarding you will continue to do it and if it is uh, stimulate the punishment center you will stop doing it and this is how we we'll start learning your activities your social behavior and uh, your emotions are will be related to all those things then there is a rage it is a strong stimulation of the punishment center which pro uh, pro provoke you to do violent and aggressive behavior and this is called a rage uh, this is uh, normally It will uh, slowly, slowly will uh, develop in your body by stimulating the ventral medial hypothalamus activities, and the rage usually character by acquire defense posture, and then you extend your limbs, 
uh, if you see the in lower animal they will lifting of the tail they will hissing splitting they will raise of the uh, all hairs the pile erections the wide open eyes will be their dilatation of the pupil and it you are in the uh, stage of severe attack and even if mild stimulation also you will start attacking to the individual this is what a rage then there is a condition called sham rage where a patient is calm uh, in, a patient uh, is calm and cool and it's with a small stimulation it will acquire the uh, uh, rage and it will be sudden change and it is because of a disturbance in the connection between hypothalamus and uh, cerebral uh, cortex and here a patient sham rage is really the emotions will be upset with that activity he has only physical activities but the emotions will not be there it is because of damage to the caudal hypothalamus then uh, regulation of the temperature so hypothalamus plays very important role in regulation of body temperature and uh, uh, normal body temperature is maintained at 37 degrees celsius and there are two centers of present hypothalamus one heat loss center and heat gain center heat loss center is present in the anterior hypothalamus more specifically a preoptic area and it act as a uh, increase the heat loss from the body when we stimulate the center there is increased blood flow to the uh, body and uh, cause vasodilation the skin and from core of, uh, of the body blood goes to the skin level and it also increases the sweating and that is how it will increase the heat loss from the body and try to lower the body temperature and if this antihypothalamus be destroyed then uh, your physiological response will be absent on heat exposure it can cause increase in your body temperature very severely then there is a heat gain center which is really in the posterior hypothalamus which acts as a heat gain center and when we stimulate uh, this heat gain center it will cause severe vasoconstriction so there is a decreased blood flow in the skin so there is a le less loss of the heat and same time there will be the shivering that will cause increase in heat production if there is uh, damage occur there then it, uh, your response to the cold weather will be ab abolish. Then come to the regulation of the water balance. Mm, it occurs through the thirst receptor and osmoreceptors. So thirst center when it, it is located in lateral hypothalamus and when it is stimulated by the hyperosmolarity of the plasma or hypertonicity of the plasma and that will create instant thirst feeling, desire of the water and you start drinking the water and if the centers get damaged it can lead to decreased fluid intake and can co even causes dehydration and on stimulation it can cause overhydration now here it is like there is decrease in body water it can decrease it increase the osmolarity of the body water and that will stimulate the thirst center and that will cause increased water ingestion similarly it will also stimulate the osmoreceptors and that act on a posterior pituitary and it will increase the edge secretion that will decrease urine output and it will try to maintain the uh, normal uh, body water content. Then also receptor it is located in supraoptic nucleus and it will also stimulated by the hypertonicity and when you stimulate the osmo receptors it will increase the edge secretion and the edge secretion act on the kidney causes increased sodium and water reabsorption. Then come to the applied aspect of the hypothalamus. When the lesions occur to the hypothalamus, it can cause autonomic disturbance, disturbance in temperature regulation, sleep disturbance, endocrine abnormality, disturbance in sexual behavior also, disturbance in water balance and emotional disturbance. We will see not we will not uh, go in detail about all conditions. We will see just a few conditions. One is a diabetes insipidus. It will occur when there is a cause deficiency of ADH. It can occur because of uh, tumor or it can be lesion in the anterior hypothalamus of the supraoptic nucleus is damaged. Then this is a deficiency of ADH and it will cause uh, severe urine formation. And as the urine will, they will keep on loss from the body, salt, salt and urine, it will cause excessive thirst also. So there is a pro, uh, polydipsia and also polyuria. But uh, it is not a diabetes. Diabetes mellitus, it is diabetes insipidus. Diabetes mellitus, it is occurred because of increased glucose level. Then come to the narcolepsy, it is a, a abnormal sleep pattern. We know there is a damage occurred with the hypothalamus. And here, patient has a 
अनरजिस्टेबल डिजायर टू हैव स्लीप और वी कैन कॉल अटैक्स आल्सो इट लाइक ही कुड नॉट कंट्रोल ही विल जस्ट स्लीप ही विल टॉक टॉक सडनली विल स्लीप ही विल ड्राइविंग एंड ही विल सडनली विल स्लीप एंड द स्लीप विल कैन स्टे विद इन फॉर फ्यू सेकंड और इट कैन स्टे अप टू 20 मिनट्स देयर इज अ कैटाफ्लेक्सी इज अ सडन आउटबर्स्ट ऑफ द इमोशंस like uh, anger fear or excitement uh, along with the narcolepsy and the attack last for a few minutes and then suddenly there will be the loss of uh, uh, there will be no loss of the consciousness so that's all for the hypothalamus any questions any doubt